Hello, everybody. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about uh, all the soil on the planet. And I am so thankful to have food and water um, and uh, to also work um, on this here. Um, there's a lot of information here. Um, one of the reasons that there is so few people talking about this um, is that there's a lot of information out there and it's um, actually we're talking about the entire planet um, so uh, it's actually a big topic um, to even consider uh, because um, you know the USDA and different places FAO here food and agriculture organization um, tries to look at everything um, so uh, you know there isn't um, you know a, a lot of people are familiar with what's going on in their own country but not necessarily um, how it works for the entire planet so I wanted to start um, just with what I'm cooking tonight um, I'm cooking uh, some chickpeas um, and some lentils and uh, I'm gonna try to cook some rice and some other basics um, I'm a vegetarian um, so we're gonna think about um, all the different types of crops and how that really relates to uh, uh, the soil and also the river system so it's actually a pretty complicated topic because there's so much involved here so I'm gonna go through a couple quick maps I'm gonna make a document here to help um, but basically this is the global soil map um, you can add these I have a link to it and um, and you can kind of change the opacity to it um, the, the trouble is that we want to be able to see uh, like for the United States for instance you want to also be able to see not only the soil but the river systems as well as um, you you want to try to see as much as possible but it's hard to see everything so here you can see this is the crop map underneath in the blue here um, as also with uh, and then there's also some other uh, urban population data so you can see um, I put the he human population here and then you can also see um, crops right so here's Africa uh, South America um, I'll try to add some more details here so you can see primarily the population here um, on the north side uh, and then again as you get into Europe and Asia uh, the, actually the population map becomes extremely important right you can see it's on the footprint here um, is almost exactly identical to the farmland and I'll do that again so you can look at China here uh, and you can see it's quite significant and even in Europe as well um, but there's also a lot of farmland uh, particularly in Ukraine and in Russia uh, that's very vital you can see the the ginormousness of that even relative to India and China so definitely Ukraine is a huge part of the puzzle as well as Europe when understanding and there's even a lot of farmland down in Australia um, you can see it's quite dense um, so some of this lighter red color is actually more difficult arid like desert you get basically in Africa um, So the bright blue pretty much is very heavy farming, uh, but we're going to talk about everything hopefully so uh, This is quite a big topic uh, to talk about so um, Again, I'm going to put the soil map back on here. It takes a long time to load I have a fast computer and it's still a lot of information so really um, even when I zoom out it gets a little bit difficult um, but <clears throat> uh, to get started on this um, <clears throat> you know uh, to really become an expert um, at understanding all this you really have to start <clears throat> first understanding where you're at locally so whether you live in the United States South America Africa Europe India or China um, look at the soil where you are and compare that to other places around the world so <clears throat> I grew up in the Midwest and I know what the soil looks like here so I pretty much know what the soil looks like in other parts of the world that are similar to that I've been to other parts of the United States and I know what the soil looks like in California for example Florida or even out here uh, in Boston area <clears throat> along the East Coast 
and it definitely changes quite a lot. Um, there's very dark soil, um, for example, along the Mississippi River um, here uh, because this is close to Chicago and there's um, kind of a different uh, soil here. And <clears throat> please forgive me if it's taking a little bit of a while to load here. Um, let me make this a little bit darker so you can see. So you can see that um, <clears throat> there's definitely a situation where you can see it's like almost a flood plain here as well as different soils along the river system. So if I turn off the entire soil database, you can start to see the rivers here. Let me go directly. I put these into separate maps so I don't have to always, it takes a while to load. So uh, basically this is the main soil map here. Um, there's also a geological map that's super important to look at. I really like this one because uh, you can zoom in and actually look pretty detailed without clouds um, and see what's going on. Uh, and then here is basically a, a mountain map, right? So you don't really have that much soil on the side of the mountains. So, so you can really start to see um, a new perspective of the soil because like here's the Appalachian Mountains and then you can see it's probably floodplain and then here's the <coughs> excuse me I'm trying to cook some food uh, but um, basically the floodplain definitely matters a lot and you can see around the world like this is the um, Genghis River Indus River and then even in Africa um, quite a lot of um, interesting areas um, this river here um, it's super important going out into Nigeria um, and then even in South America, you might be surprised. Uh, but the actual river system, I'm sorry, it's a different map. We'll look at that in a second. Um, but this is the actual, just the river map. Um, you can see the extent of it. And it's also got uh, the hydrological basin. basin. So you can see, um, let me turn off the rivers just so you can see. So I'll zoom out. Um, here and you can look at this all globally. Um, it takes a really long time to load. Sorry, I'm trying to record this at the same time as things. So basically this is really helpful because you can start to see um, where these basins are. If I turn on the rivers in a second here, um, you'll see, for example, the Amazon, it is quite complicated. Congo is quite complicated and you can see here um, essentially in India, this is also, I have the population listed here, um, but if I put the farmland map on here, you can start to see, uh, let me turn off the population. Uh, so there you can see that, uh, but it's kind of nice to see both. So it's hard to see everything at the same time. That's why this opacity thing is pretty helpful. Let me, um, so to explain this, you may want to actually look at the river systems. Uh, very carefully to understand the soil because essentially where there's water and where there's a river um, we have farming and we can uh, uh, work on those areas however there's a lot of wildlife regions as well um, I was really surprised at how important it is to really look at the starts of the rivers um, because that's where the clean water is and a lot of the wildlife has been just devastated um, further down the river, right? Like, so every major river essentially ends in a city, whether you're in New York City here, Louisiana, uh, Nigeria, Lagos, um, pretty much everywhere, you know, Argentina, Buenos Aires, uh, the Nile River right here uh, with Egypt and Cairo, um, and then uh, Bangladesh with uh, the capital here, um, and also uh, Calcutta. Um, so, and then even Shanghai also has a major river here, Hong Kong. So every, pretty much every major river has a major city on it. Um, and that means that the wildlife is not there. It's actually further up the river. So we have to really watch uh, the farming situations, uh, particularly at the starts of the river and also the midpoints. Really, we want to be cautious everywhere um, for the wildlife. So... Um, there is quite a number of maps here. This is really an awesome map. Um, I wish this could be done for the entire planet, but if you zoom in here, you'll actually see different types of crops. So every color here is a different type of crop, and it really gives you a very good picture of what's going on in the United States because you see how important essentially soybeans are and corn. So soybeans is green and corn is yellow. 
Um, and that means they're feeding cattle. So quite a lot of this farmland is actually not even for humans. It's just for cattle. So um, that's really questionable as a vegetarian. Um, a lot of this farmland could be just uh, other types of food that people could eat uh, rather than uh, purely for uh, meat eaters. So that's something to think about. This soil map has changed quite a lot, um, but I really used to like it more, but it's still very helpful because when you compare it uh, to the other soil map, you can see uh, there's quite a lot of granularity and there's different perspectives about how that global soil works. But one thing I wanted to make very clear is particularly in India and China and also down here in Thailand, they're essentially farming on the floodplain. Um, so they've completely farmed it out in addition to the floodplain. So it's actually the main farmland is actually right in the river delta region so that quite really hasn't happened in the united states but there is a lot of sugar cane going on down here in louisiana as well as florida um, and you can see that some of this soil is actually similar to the almost similar to the jungle uh, but certainly these floodplain areas um, are very important uh, biologically and also the when you look at the satellite imagery you'll see a lot of the wastewater will go hundreds of miles out into the ocean. So that's really important um, to think about. Uh, uh, so we just went through a really logical definition of soil on the planet. Um, <clears throat> and I want to back out. And why are we really doing this whole study? Um, well, we want to have fun, right? We want to eat food. Um, and really, we're going to radically change the discussion in a moment here, hopefully to be way more interesting uh, and actually helpful, not just like this is the soil regions. Um, we have a lot of understanding to do um, <clears throat> with things, so, but it helps to at least have uh, some common sense knowledge uh, about the global soil system. So what I did here is I circled pretty much everything, right, um, that what we what we're doing in terms of farming so uh let me just switch to these maps really quick so you can see what we're talking about um so we have a global farming map here let me turn off the um hydrological basin so this is everything that we're farming on our planet um you can kind of see the outline um let me change the map uh to something else uh maybe yeah. sorry about this if this will be easier to see that's yeah, not well probably the easiest map would be this one um so uh you can essentially see the outline of the, all the continents um and you can see what's going on globally for the farming situation it's not it's pretty accurate um but really what it comes down to is individual farmers um it's way more interesting um to zoom in uh and really study what's going on in a particular area um for example shanghai uh india um or Louisiana, California, um, you know, all uh, southern Brazil is super interesting. Africa is unbelievably interesting. Um, there's also this major area here um, in Ethiopia. Uh, but essentially, what I try to do is circle everything on the map, and it becomes unbelievably important, uh, particularly in what I call Oceania here, because you start to get ocean. Um, there's just a huge amount of fishing going on along the coast here. It's hard to explain everything, so I tried to just circle it here and explain some of the basics, um, as well as some extremely important concepts on the ocean front, right? So basically there's a huge area here. Um, it's really not that huge. It's kind of becoming smaller and smaller. Uh, but uh, however you look at this, wherever you are around the world, um, particularly most people might be in India and China, um, as well as in Europe or even North America or South America, the farming situation really um, is super important, right? So uh, these are all these regions um, and we're all connected. Like even in the United States, we depend on Mexico in the wintertime 100%. Um, same with Europe. It gets really cold. Um, they store up the food. They have a lot of wheat um, and other things, but fruits, vegetables, where do they get that from? So, uh, and some of this travels 
you know, 3,000 miles or more. I, I did a plot to see, okay, so if the flu comes from Mexico, it has to go to Chicago. It's thousands and thousands of miles. Or even California, if you're sitting in New York City, it's freezing cold, you got to travel across the entire country. That's thousands of miles just to get your food. Um, and Africa um, obviously has a huge question here and South America uh, because of the jungle, right? There's really um, only, this is the only jungle we got. I, I, I didn't even circle it here because it's so it's so beyond important. Um, it's like we can't even really even look at it because there's just a huge, it's how do you circle this region? It includes the ocean here. It includes, you know, there's so much other stuff going on and there's even a separate jungle right in here uh that's super important um so there's just so many areas um that are hard to explain and in here it just gets extremely important because we're talking about the ocean and it's not just these islands here um thousands and thousands of islands and and how does that relate to africa and even the coastal regions of india here there's just so much to discuss so um and there's different ways to look at it too so um here you can see again this is the um earthquake map um and we kind of got into a discussion that was one of the most important discussions perhaps ever about wildlife um in terms of how we think spiritually about the planet right so many of these earthquakes happen on these islands in the ocean here this is the last 30 days um we also have some other maps uh that i can go through uh and show you but essentially we started to understand um how important it is um to look at some of these regions in a new way not just logically um and there's some things that are not explained in here um i circled uh where is it this map uh sorry here so there's a lot of areas that have completely been devastated there's no more fish in the mediterranean no more fish up here they've completely fished it out in uh, bay of bengal and even in off of thailand there's no more fish they're still fishing here but it's just so many boats that i really doubt that there's much fish left at all so um and even up in the Arctic, uh, Europeans are really overfishing uh, out of Iceland because um, remember the food often does come thousands of miles away. Um, so a lot of that comes from the Arctic now because they no longer can fish in the Mediterranean or the Baltic Sea because the salt content is too high. So um, meaning there's no oxygen left in the water and that is basically 100% true uh, in both the Caspian Sea and uh, the Black Sea, right? So basically, um, the soil areas, and there's new areas. This whole lake has dried up, for instance. That's a huge lake right here. Probably should have circled that in yellow as well. Um, aerial Sea. So you can see there's a major mountain range here. And we got some new things to understand. So you can see this is the Ural Mountains kind of pointing here. There's so much I've discussed on a spiritual side. I'm trying not to talk about that on camera right now because... Uh, it's so important for people to come up with their own ideas. I don't want to be like, hey, you know, I'm the only person on the planet studying this. Um, there's a lot of people that really care about new ideas beyond what I'm talking about. So, and certainly there's so many different perspectives, particularly Africa, Latin America, India, China, and then of course, all these thou thousands and thousands of islands with different cultures and different beliefs about how the earth works. And I want to tell you this story is so important because it's something that I will never forget is that when the first person supposedly traveled around Magellan, traveled around the, the earth, he died in the Philippines because they killed him. He, they said he, he had his perspective about how the earth worked and they killed him, right? <laughs> because like there's many perspectives and that's why I don't want to do a discussion. Uh, you know, I, I try to just write about some things because there's so many perspectives way beyond all of our knowledge about how the earth works spiritually and logically right um because these are the first time these maps have never been available I until recently we waited thousands of years to look at an image like this 
or like this, or like this, or like this, or like this. These are all brand new images and all of us can really look at this, but also there's some other things that I'm not really talking about in terms of understanding. So how I've been completely amazed at how, you know, we have people in the United States from all over the world and how that happens uh, both logically and spiritually. They come in as students or to work or there's just so many different cultures in the United States um, and how that's linked uh, to the rest of the entire planet. Uh, so we can learn quite a lot no matter where we are on the planet about everything else. Um, and we don't even need to be on the computer at all. So my feeling is that um, we have a lot of spiritual understanding to go um, and we can sense the entire universe, we can sense the entire planet. And there's just a huge amount of understanding there that um, really I need to talk about and and we all need to reconsider because um, uh, we have a lot to understand um, essentially. So. Um, so I want to go back through these soil maps one more time um, just to look at a couple more details. Um, so again, really what we're trying to do is understand what's going on, right, um, in terms of farming, right? So, and how we can basically be careful about how we're using the planet. A lot of that becomes, conversation becomes around the Amazon and the Congo, as well as the Oceania areas here and the Caribbean. <coughs> Excuse me. I had some <coughs> chili peppers. I was using my food. Really sorry about this. So really, um, and really the conversation really gets very important under high population regions like India and the North Valley here, as well as in China, Eastern China. So, um, but <coughs> excuse me wow so really what surprised me most was africa um because it's not just the soil regions um it's the biodiversity it's the lakes everything um so in the in the jungle here we do have this major river um but we also have um different types of climate um let me see if i can load that map up for you hold on a second okay so i just loaded up this climate map on google earth and there's so much information here that it kind of gets ridiculous and um, my computer completely slows down and um, but i'm trying to get everything here so you can see i loaded up two separate ones because there's actually different versions of the climate map here and i'm sorry about that if it gets confusing but let's try to keep it really colorful um so you can see and i want to zoom out on the entire planet um, and get you everything. Uh, so, because really with the soil map, um, we're also talking about the climate. Um, and there's just a different perspective for the Amazon as well as, you can see this is the only region that's really like this. Um, and there is a separate section down here through Rio de Janeiro, but it's really important to have a variety of climates. Um, and that happens particularly in Africa and also in Colombia here, you can see there's a variety of climate and there's a variety of soils and it even gets up into the mountains with ice and snow. So that doesn't happen anywhere else on the planet because it's near the equator and there's mountains. So it's slightly different there in Colombia. Um, and then you have a very large, so the difference, hold on a second, I'm sorry. So again, we need to get way um, out there um, with our conversation because this is a rather simple conversation, but again, it's the first time in history that we've been able to do this, so it's really important to see everything. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because a lot of people maybe don't have um, all the computer stuff to see this, and it's just helpful to get it on a map. Um, but you can see there is some weird complexities here, um, and even separate, very slight regions um, that really matter quite a lot. Um, and also that happens here in Madagascar. Um, and then particularly here, we start to see all these earthquakes and then some regions here, um, basically in Thailand. This is a similar climate to Florida, but again, there's just huge amounts of these red areas here that you can see. So let me bring this all the way around. And then you cross the vast Pacific Ocean, um, and you get back to the United States and 
basically you start to see how important uh, Central America is. There's only a little sliver like that down in Florida. And really that's all been populated. Miami, I mean, it's there's no trees left in Miami. So uh, there's maybe one, like one mangrove tree. So I, I discussed that. So and there's really a spiritual importance that every single tree matters so much. So, um, and anyway, so... I, I don't want to talk about this too much more, um, but I'll, I'll spin around the whole entire planet here so you can see everything again. Um, and we'll even look up here in Europe uh, so you can see what's going on. Um, and, you know, there's a huge amount of these earthquakes going on. It doesn't show up. There's They take out some of the earthquakes on this because it's so much data um, to, to move around the imagery here. Um, and then even on the North Pole, um, is also super awesome. So we've been discussing primarily the North Pole and the South Pole, but, um, and a lot of this started, a lot of people say that, um, some of the original population migrations were from Africa. Um, and you can see here. So, uh, but let me, let me stop that map for a second. Um, and you can see that this doesn't really happen anywhere else on the planet. And um, all this diversity um in soil and you can see um it actually gets pretty complicated here too it will load up the map um and there's these major lakes here um so you of course have this jungle soil um but really um there's a lot of complexity there um because of the climate so and it's hard to appreciate on that map um what we're talking about but you can kind of see on this map how important this is all around this eye essentially of africa um, and you get animals that you get nowhere else in the world um, because there's big animals here like giraffes zebras elephants and all these kind of animals but that that doesn't really happen in the uh, amazon because it's actually a different type of wildlife there entirely because it's smaller animals in general um they do have tigers um, but um and big snake very big snakes um and actually one of the problems is that in india they've completely devastated the wildlife it's all farmland now and it's really important how important pakistan is because it's actually one of the largest farming regions in the world um as well as populated so thailand so uh, again, here you can start to see that on the map. Um, a lot of people, I think they've done the calculation, there's actually more farmland in India than there is in the entire United States, or at least a very similar amount. Um, and that's because it's such high density farming there and they're really careful about what they're doing. Um, so here you can see, um, actually there's quite a lot of space, but, um, and again, here's the river systems. You can kind of see that detail and then here the population is even covered up entirely the river system right uh, so uh give me a break here for a second um but i wanted to say thanks so much so it helps me to do so much practical things um why i work on these whether it's a video or whatever um i just was washing some dishes and getting a little bit of food here and i mean the the river maps are super important in this discussion. Um, it really, before I even started looking at, I mean, people, we could see a river. Oftentimes we can't see the soil because it's underground uh, or grass or other things. So the rivers are a really important um, part of this discussion. And, you know, I've had a headache for a few days now um, with stress um, because some pretty things that some people would say is funny, but... I would say is pretty serious sometimes um but <clears throat> clean water is really important and really that goes back to part of our discussion that we have in, in terms of the start of the rivers so this is the <clears throat> maybe the real world map because it's really the hydrological basins so you can see this is essentially outlines the congo um and then different parts of east africa and it's maybe different world map um than you might think but it's actually has to do with water so um whether if you're working on the soil map <clears throat> definitely want to look at it side by side with the river map um and 
Um, I'm not going to zoom in here because it's really nice to see everything, but certain rivers are huge. Um, and uh, believe it or not, we're all connected to probably a huge river eventually. So one river, it goes to another river, it goes to another, and eventually it becomes a ginormous Mississippi River. Um, and there isn't really a lot of fresh water. Um, this river map makes it look like there's a lot, but essentially... Uh, what I read is that the Great Lakes alone, which is just a small region, <clears throat> essentially has enough water for all the clouds on the planet. So what that means to me, <clears throat> if that's true, which I, I don't even believe, uh, but certainly how much water is in the air really matters a lot because it takes rain to feed the crops and the rivers won't exist without rain. Um, so how much water is in the air is a very important question. Um, and if these rivers or lake, lakes dry up, um, a lot of that is coming from Antarctica. I've been doing a lot of work on Antarctica as well as Greenland uh, has a lot of ice as well. But honestly, when you look at the information, it's not a whole lot. Give me one second. I'll show you the water stuff really quickly. So yeah, this is very mysterious. I got sick during this conversation. It's probably not a good enough conversation. I'm really sorry about this. I wanted it to be way more fun and awesome, but um, I'm just in a lot of stress right now. So, um, but here you can kind of see um, how important the Pacific Ocean is. Atlantic, Indian Ocean. You see basically the Indian Ocean, one thing that really surprised me is that it's basically the same size as the entire Atlantic. Then you have the Southern Ocean, which is around Antarctica, and then the Arctic Ocean. Um, and then you can see here the relative uh, sizes of the water in cubic miles. Um, so I calculated this uh, for you and you can see freshwater, so there's a lot of water on glaciers, groundwater, and actually, Underground is where you get a lot of the water. In fact, look at this. The lakes are actually quite small for the planet. Um, and you can see freshwater lakes here. Um, actually shows more, but uh, maybe the calculation, I had to look at it. But you can see certain lake, like Lake Bacall has a huge amount. Like Lake Bacall alone, which doesn't even show up, has as much water as all the North American Great Lakes. African Great Lakes having even more water here than uh, those. So, but giving you kind of relative <coughs> side. No, <clears throat> this was the hard part for me to believe. 6% of the water on our planet is atmosphere. Um, so actually, uh, there's more water in even one lake uh, than there's in the entire atmosphere. So that didn't make sense to me because, man, does it rain sometimes. But it just shows you how fragile our planet is in terms of water because if this is true, um, the atmosphere, I mean, there, it's not always wet and rainy, um, but certainly uh, that's a small piece here. So, uh, and then fresh, but this is only fresh water, right? So we're not even looking at the salt water there. So what that means is that if we need fresh water, the, um, cause you start to see, uh, where did I show that? <sighs> Sorry. Um, so basically lakes down here is really a small part, um, but I think I got it somewhere here, fresh water, but comparison, uh, sorry. Well, anyway, I think glaciers and ice. So yeah, the problem is that the fresh water is only this small portion in here. It's such a small portion that it doesn't even show up really. So um, ice and snow, yeah. So basically that's, that's the reason. So basically that, that kind of scared me because um, obviously, it's nice to have fresh water. It's very different if you try to swim in it and things like that. Um, so, uh, but here is also that comparison. So you can see how important the African Great Lakes are as well. And notice the uh, Amazon doesn't even show up. Nothing in South America shows up here um, on that. So, um, but going back to the uh, soil map. So I'm just trying to think of other things here. There's just so much to look at. So again, uh, where I really had fun was comparing where I knew about in my own country and comparing that to other areas. Um, let me go into a couple quick ones, um, particularly that we looked at um, on these maps. Uh, 
so we can see here. So certain areas are extremely important. So again, California, you may want to really look at, um, particularly in Central America, and then also all on the East Coast, particularly down here in the Southern States. And there's actually this whole region down here, as well as here, um, that you want to take a look at. Um, and basically India, China, um, and then certainly all of Europe, and then even parts of Russia um, are very important because of that farmland map. If you look at this farmland map, you can basically see there's two major sections here, at least, um, and then also in the Middle East, um, and even in Africa, you can see there's definitely going to be uh, some interesting things. So even if there's not a lot of farmland there, there's still super important areas for the wildlife. Um, and certainly, um, one of the main reasons I wanted to get into this discussion was to look at how to help the animals and the wildlife on the planet. So there's definitely a lot of work to do um, in understanding all that. So here's some more uh, details. So I'll try to be right back. I need to take a break. Uh, this is just so much information. We just looked at the entire planet. Um, it's really amazing. Um, I'm just so blessed to be able to look at everything uh, with you here. And I'm sorry, like I'm not too good at these videos here, but um, there's just a lot of stuff to look at. Um, and it's kind of scary because uh, we need to look at this really in an awesome way. So um, probably I'm gonna change this discussion entirely soon uh, about uh, how I talk about this and hopefully be way more interesting and fun. <clears throat> So please forgive me. Um, I have a very mysterious cold right now. I don't know what happened, um, but um, I mean, what I really wanted to say is that um, a couple things. Um, this is our planet. You know, this is not just our planet. This is the wildlife planet. And um, as we get further and further out, we're not really gonna have anything like this anywhere else ever. Um, and so we really have to think about this, um, not necessarily the way that, we have to think about this in so many new ways. So, um, and we started to talk about some of them and as we look around here, and I'm so thankful to be able to share these images with you. Um, man, um, there's a really radical change in how we think about it. And it goes back to that story about understanding the planet, not just logically. Um, and hopefully you have total fear a little bit about what I'm talking about tonight. And you're just like, wow, this is not the way to think about this. We have to really think about this um, way more caring and loving towards the wildlife and our planet. Um, and basically, um, there's a lot to study here. So, um, but what I'm trying to explain is that everything is connected universally. Um, so no matter where we are, um, I live up here in Idaho. Um, I can sense the animals, the wildlife, the entire planet from just here in Idaho. And, and we need to start doing some interesting things spiritually um, to really understand things. So um, yes, we can have a logical understanding, but there's a lot of work to do. Um, in some new areas. So thank you so much. I really hope you enjoyed the presentation um, and you're able to see Earth uh, from a totally different perspective, um, even on the mysterious North Pole. Um, we were talking about some things um, on text. So, and basically uh, here is a perspective of the North Pole. So um, I'm not gonna get into too much detail, but we basically have a couple different concepts of the North Pole because we have basically where the axis spins, um, where we're actually spinning around as the planet uh, rotates. Um, and we have a magnetic pole and then maybe even a spiritual pole and not just maybe, we definitely do, right? So, and how we're starting to define uh, some of these other 
uh, ways of thinking about the planet is extremely important. My journey started with really um, kind of working with my brother on the neuroscience of the planet and just realizing that this guy down here really does look like a brain. Um, and what does that mean uh, when we think about the planet really differently than we've ever thought about it? So here you can see Antarctica and you can see um, we just got a new perspective of how to think about, you can almost see the face here. So uh, there's something happened here, like a mouth, uh, almost a kiss going out uh, sideways. So, uh, and then here you can see, uh, you can't really see it, but uh, there's almost uh, two eyes here, right? So uh, let me turn that off the map because it's kind of unbelievable in that kind of perspective. So you can see here, and now you start to see this eye, right? So basically there's a missing eye that you don't even see unless you have the other map. So, uh, and then that's where we have to start looking at the perspectives of many different perspectives because, well, the eye's kind of hidden now, right? So what happened there? Um, how do we really understand what's going on uh, with each continent and even this chase going on between Antarctica and Australia? And then we also looked at some new information recently about how this tip uh, looks very similar to this tip here in Australia. And then also uh, just how everything will potentially work uh, with a mysterious triangle here, um, basically Oceana, right? So there's this uh, kind of this triangular structure here, um, something that uh, resembles a galaxy here. and. I'm sorry if I'm not talking about this um, in an awesome way for everybody, but it's just it's just so, I don't even know what to say. I mean, it's just like, wow. Uh, so uh, there's gonna be a lot uh, more stuff to look at. Um, uh, and we looked at uh, something pretty funny recently, uh, Korea and uh, essentially what's going on here. So there's this mysterious uh, hole here um, on the north, Pole and uh, I mean whatever you want to say about this um, there's a uh, kind of like an opening shape here uh, as you'll see in a moment uh, sorry it's like a lot of data so you kind of have spreading out here going in in here and then some kind of fault line coming here through the North Pole and uh, what is this going on here so we have the Bering Strait uh, all these earthquakes kind of coming up through here um, and, um, you know, I mean, let's be serious about this, right? So uh, there's a lot of things to understand um, and how this is all connected. Um, and I'm so fortunate to be able to have a fun discussion about this. Now, I want to also say the seriousness, what's going on on the uh, other things. You know, I'm trying to work on a couple um, different film projects. Um, some of them really have to do about freedoms um, not only for humanity, but the wildlife. And I can even hear an animal outside. Um, and excuse me. I'm trying to eat carefully, and and, uh, and I'm being so thankful here uh, for the food. But you know, I I don't know what to say here because we got some really important discussions um, that we just started and I hope my friend uh, can look at this soon uh, because we just noticed this it's just so hard to move this globe around because there's thousands and thousands of earthquakes but as we looked at this um, essentially pathway to the North Pole and these mysterious three islands um, as well as both a logical side of the pole in a spiritual side of the pole, we noticed that this Greenland here is probably almost exactly across from that ring of fire. So that, that's gonna be a huge discussion, I know, uh, because it relates to the North Pole. And we're only just beginning to understand we have this mysterious triangle also on the North Pole. And now you can start to see they almost fit here. And then we even looked at how Saudi Arabia and the Middle East potentially is linked here so now we have a really complex story 
uh, that we're starting to understand <laughs> about the planet. And I definitely want to work on some really exciting, fun projects that are way beyond what we're just talking about here. I'm not even discussing this in a serious manner um, because there's going to be a lot of perspectives um, of what's going on here. So, um, But there is some evidence uh, certainly to support uh, what we're talking about. So, um, and yeah, so thanks a lot. And really, I'm so excited to be able to work with so many people on some fun things. Um, you can see there's some other kind of gaps here um, in the ocean. Um, give me one second, I'm sorry. So I really wanna emphasize here um, how fun the conversation can be if we talk about things offline. Um, yeah, you now have a perspective of maybe the entire planet, um, but we really gotta start doing stuff other than on computer. Um, so, uh, um, there's just so much information here. Um, but you know, there's, there's a lot of balance between everything. So, um, sometimes maybe we get caught out in the middle of the ocean as just a tiny island and yeah, that's important, but honestly, what about everything else? So like, that's how I feel about a lot of things sometimes. Um, but, uh, so we really need to work together and we really need to think about the wildlife and I'm really thankful. Hopefully, um, the next conversation can be a lot more about the wildlife. Um, and you know, it's not just the next conversation, it's this conversation. So, um, but basically I circled these red zones here. Um, the original plan was to actually look uh, primarily at the wildlife here uh, in these regions. Um, it's hard to grasp uh, the complexity of this and I can miss uh, talking about this particular region right here. Um, so, uh, and just the importance of all these islands. So uh, let me, I'm gonna save some of these images so you can uh, take a look at them as well. So. Uh, but let's try to dive in a little bit more uh, because we really need to look at the wildlife situation. Hopefully you're not too stressed about it. Uh, I'm stressed about it um, because uh, we're talking about billions or even trillions of little tiny animals. Um, the biomass is actually more significant uh, for wildlife than it is for humans. Uh, even like chickens, I think, uh, you know, have a huge amount of uh, cows and all that so um basically uh how do we really start this so we're gonna have to flip the table a little bit um and say uh the ocean right so uh as well as the jungle so really let's let's go back to the uh, conversation in the ocean here uh so the the difficult part <laughs> about this conversation is that um these maps don't really show it too well um but let's look at i'm going to zoom in opposite so you can see uh, both here um so it's going to start to <clears throat> load this they had a different version that i kind of thought was pretty interesting too uh, before this but um but basically, uh, there's this floodplain here and there in the jungle, um, but then there's all this stuff here. So it's a little bit complicated because you kind of got to understand, um, where is it? Sorry, uh, this mountain range is here. So um, in the Caribbean, what we don't really <clears throat> realize is how important um, particularly these three islands are because um, essentially there's this mysterious guy in the Haiti in the center where that has the mountain range. So what happens there is you have different types of soil, you have different types of mountains uh, and uh, things. So basically these these guys here become extremely important as well as Colombia, uh, but particularly uh, this guy because you got the ocean um, and the mountains and all that. So. Uh, and that's also very important all on the coast because you get drainage into it. This actually goes quite far, 100 or so miles out, the pollution. It's unbelievable that it even clean, it cleans up at all. Um, so why uh, this has been going on for a long time, but how is it even possible to clean that up? 
that best. Uh, but here you see Galapagos Islands down here. Um, also super important. Um, and just this, uh, we kind of started talking about this face or even a possibility of two eyes um, kind of looking across the ocean here. So at the circular region. So what I was saying is a little easier to understand this soil map uh, with basically uh, looking, uh, you know, it's hard to see without the mountain ranges. So here I've zoomed in and you can start to see some of the population things here. Let's let's really look at that really carefully so you can see. So here are the population here, you can see on top of this, um, doesn't really show you the soil, but you can see how significant uh, the population is on that. And let me load back up the soil map. And you can kind of change the opacity and then you can start to see those are the pockets of population there. Uh, but uh, definitely there's a lot of population there. So, and that's something to think about. And there's such very important details all along here um, to look at, uh, particularly I would say uh, out here in Colombia. So it doesn't even begin to explain how complicated the swamp region is in this whole valley, but you can kind of see that on the relief map because there's gonna be this whole swamp region here. So it's a separate, uh, and actually this whole region along here is a national park. Um, so right in here, you get a lot of very interesting stuff. But again, I wanted to think about the farming side of this too. So it's a hard conversation to have because we kind of need to get out of certain regions and farm in other regions. That basically makes Mexico vital in the whole conversation as well as down here in Nicaragua and Honduras. Uh, so basically this farming region can basically provide, it's much larger than all of California. And this provides so much food for the United States. So this region is gonna be very vital in the next hundred years, as well as you can see all of Cuba, cause we can probably pull a lot of these smaller farms and work more with Cuba uh, to try to help uh, prevent uh, you know, there's just so many of these islands that are becoming populated. In fact, they're all populated. So uh, that becomes wastewater runoff and a lot of other problems. So you can even move this from Cuba over to Mexico and even further up. Uh, Louisiana can help out a lot as well as Florida, uh, preventing more kinds of farming. And even all this comes out of the jungle. So rather than farming in the jungle, let's try to push that up further into the United States and share food. So. Uh, and in, in Brazil, we kind of see there's quite a lot of mountains here, but they actually do quite a lot of uh, farming down there. So it's going to load up the image kind of slowly here. Sorry about this. Uh, but you can see in the jungle here. So let's uh, let's try to stop this conversation because I'm kind of worried that people are online too much. Um, and I'm just so thankful to be able to talk about it. But I really hope you have a great day or night, no matter where you are around the planet. And enjoy all, studying all this information, but uh, try to uh, do some stuff offline. So that's why I want to stop the conversation. Thank you so much. I'll see you. So I wanted to close off that uh, live stream uh, just because I'm worried about people's health, um, trying to sit around too much. And uh, definitely it's easier to fast forward or go look at things but I wanted to look at Asia really quick just in case uh, you need access to see what's going on on the soil maps so you can see the complexity here uh, let's just zoom in on India really quick uh, so you can save these images if you need um, you can start to see some of the population uh, as well as river systems here uh, which should be very helpful hopefully um, Sorry, I'm trying to eat at the same time as discuss. Um, but it's really important to understand how important Thailand is, which is unbelievably important. So really it's like an all day discussion in any one of these areas. So that's why this is such a hard topic, uh, but particularly uh, Borneo is a whole new uh, topic to discuss because a lot of the uh, people in Indonesia are actually moving over to Borneo. So uh, that's a huge discussion there. Um, but 
uh, the Philippines and then looking at Taiwan and the rest of China. Um, what I really like about this map is it starts to explain how important China is on farming. Uh, but particularly it shows you a new perspective of how the river works. Uh, there's actually Yellow River and the Yangtze River. Um, they're two different rivers. There's actually three rivers. There's another one uh, down here in Hong Kong uh, called the Pearl River. But it doesn't have the flooding uh, that you see here. And this really doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. Um, so if you look at that size of that floodplain, it's huge, right? So it's basically that whole region there. Um, it's slightly different. There's actually quite a lot of flooding here. This is a different type of soil, uh, but this is actually a delta region. So it's just because the Himalayas are so big, uh, the mountain range here, you do get a lot of raw water runoff there. So we have kind of a weird story uh, for the planet because the river system is not what you think at all. So, uh, Really, some of the biggest rivers here are the Mississippi River, the Congo River, excuse me, the Amazon River and the Congo, as well as the Ganges, and then you can see, so really it takes a large uh, hydrological basin for there to be a major river, as well as a mountain range. So that means that, uh, you know, although this hydrological basin is small, uh, the mountain range is huge. So kind of a trade-off there but the size of the river isn't always the only factor so you basically have smaller rivers here on these islands um, but <clears throat> extremely important because it drains right into the ocean very quickly so you basically come from the mountain to the ocean really quickly so um, <clears throat> and then uh, all these bays <clears throat> being super important as well so uh, but definitely uh, if you have a chance to try to take a look. So with that, I'm going to try to close out the conversation. And I really hope you're smiling, having fun, and really thinking about things totally differently. Um, what really happened to me is that, again, I looked at Antarctica and I said, hey, maybe it's not just Antarctica. We need to think about something totally different about how we understand everything about the planet. And that's when it became a really fun story and all kinds of great things started to happen as well as men don't just sit there online um i'm trying to make some real friends and actually uh do some things i'll see you later thank you so much